Come on. No. Um, actually, I appreciate going right after the keynote because uh, I thought that Natalie gave an awesome presentation and it was a really good lead into the kinds of things that uh, I'm going to talk in. Um, she gave a bit of uh, advice on you know, how, to, how to manage uh, your business and I want to give you a bit of advice on how to manage yourself, um, how, to, how to make yourself a bit more successful running your own business. So I, I did this presentation um, a few weeks ago at, uh, at our meetup. Uh, I organized WordCamp and WordPress Orlando. <coughs> Um, and, uh, and I wanted to prepare for coming here, so I decided to give it there, and uh, all my old coworkers and my old boss from the last company I was at were in attendance, watching, which I thought was great, you know, because I can be like, by the way, here's what you do. Screw these guys and go do this. Uh, but they're, they're, they're nice, you know, they're nice folks. It wasn't, it wasn't too weird that I was, like, talking about people while looking right at them. Um, thankfully, thankfully, I don't have that going on here today. <laughs> so who here runs their own business right now? Okay, then, then you're, go do something else. Seriously, you're in the wrong. <laughs> no, um, so uh, I've been, I've been uh, running my own business uh, for the past six years. I've been running it full time for the past three years. Um, about four years ago, what I was doing was going to uh, a day job where I was doing web development. So I spent uh, from you know, eight to six, I was on the computer, uh, working for clients for my boss, go home, take a short nap, get online, work another four or five hours on my own projects, uh, take another short nap, and uh, do it all over again. Um, I was doing that for months on end. It was actually more fun than it sounds because I, I love the internet. I've been uh, similar to Natalie, I've been doing web development since about 12 years old in high school. Um, I've been doing WordPress since about 2008. Um, close to seven years now. Um, so so it's, it's, it's fun for me to spend my time on the computer. Presumably it's fun for some of you as well because you know, here you are. Um, but I, there was a lot of things that I did not know. I didn't have any sort of mentor uh, to walk me through what it means to start your own business. I didn't have anyone, I didn't really have anyone to look to. Uh, I just mainly started getting ideas from uh, the meetup group that we had, the WordPress meetup group, uh, from other events I attended, or other people I saw that were doing this themselves. I even stole of ideas for my boss. So again, this probably doesn't apply to most of you since y'all are already doing your own businesses, but there's a lot of things that you need to consider before you start doing this or even things that you need to consider on a regular basis. Uh, I, I pretty often spend time reviewing the kind of work I'm doing, uh, reviewing uh, where I want to be and what I've done and see where they match up. I did a pretty uh, extensive, um, I call it life audit, uh, about two months ago where I go through all the things that I want to be focusing on and see how far off that is from reality. Thankfully, you know, it's shrinking, but there's still, there's still that big gap of, you know, between like I've never been to Paris or whatever it is your thing, which maybe that one's not good for me, but whatever the thing it is that you want to do uh, and, and whatever it is that you're doing now that, uh, that can either help you get there or is hindering you from getting to whatever thing you want. The end goal presumably is not money for you, but whatever it is that money can help you achieve or whatever it is that uh, running your own business can help you achieve. Uh, myself, that's freedom to spend a couple days coming out here, um, to spend all day doing, you know, just reading a book or doing whatever I want to do because I don't have someone constantly breathing down my neck, you know, making sure I'm getting whatever thing out there. Um, that's not to say that I spend less time working because I probably spend more time than I did at the J job, but I get to do what I want. Um, if you're starting out your company, you probably have a problem with uh, irregular income. Uh, I know that I did, um, especially when I was starting out. I had the problem of some months I was getting several clients and getting backed up with work, and then a few months later I'd be getting no clients and trying to figure out, you know, what's happening there. I haven't found any really good way to correlate when I'm getting them or not. Some people say they have seasons and cycles. For me, it's just uh, some months nobody decided that they uh, needed help. Um, you might have a problem similar, uh, related to that. You may have a problem managing personal costs if you're not the kind of person who is very dedicated uh, to making sure that you don't go over budget, dedicated to making sure you don't go crazy and do a lot of spending. Um, I, I like buying stuff. I like toys. I like fancy electronics, all these things. Uh, they cost money. <laughs> um, that wasn't me. No. <laughs> uh, 
You might have a problem with work-life balance. That's one thing that, I don't even think that's a thing that exists. I'm not a fan of the whole idea of work-life balance, but you know, it's repeated so many times to so make sure you have a balance between this and that. It's more like just make the time doing the things that you want to do. Sometimes I have to spend an evening in working on a project because I spent all day goofing off. That's my fault. Uh, I, I can make those decisions uh, you know, when I need to figure out what I need to be focusing my time on. Uh, if you're running your own business, you're going to have to do something that a lot of people hate. You're going to have to work with the clients directly. Uh, don't worry, it's, it's a lot more fun to be able to just uh, to be able to just have somebody else manage the clients and you just do whatever work that you're told to do. And I enjoy that as well. But I also enjoy getting to talk with these clients, getting to figure out what they really want, finding new ways to help their business out. Uh, my company, we don't just build websites. I kind of try to build solutions for people. Uh, to you know, I have to ask the question of why very often. Uh, but if you're not the kind of person who likes talking to people so much or likes talking to people who are paying you money uh, very much uh, because they're usually more demanding of your time than talking to other people is, uh, that might be a problem. Um, you might have a problem figuring out where you fit in with all this. There's a lot of people here, uh, just this weekend, there's something like 600 people here who are doing their own things. Everyone has their own different focus that they're working on. Um, so it's sometimes hard to figure out where it is that you fit in. Um, I started out being very generalist when I started doing web development, uh, but I realized after a while that I had to choose certain things that I wanted to focus on. So you know, the first thing I focus on is WordPress. My business is geared towards doing all WordPress work. I don't do any of the other, uh, any other CMSs that I used to use. Um, it's been quite a long time since I built a static website. I choose to focus on the clients who specifically want WordPress. Uh, and then finding niches within that. I do a lot of membership websites. So when somebody says, oh, I want to do you know, this certain thing, I have a lot, of, uh, a lot of other sites that I can draw on, both as uh, showing them that, yes, this is something I've done before and I know how to do. And also, it helps me know where to get started because I've done it so many times. Uh, finding that niche can be difficult when you're getting started. Um, it can sometimes be thrust upon you. Last year, I had a lot of clients who ran, uh, who ran hotel websites and uh, travel websites. Um, I'm mainly going to chalk that up to the fact that I live in Orlando, where we have you know, 60 million visitors a year. But I don't think I was actively pursuing them. Um, but it was, kind of, it was kind of pushed upon me that these are clients that seem to like our work. Um, so that niche could be one that you choose yourself or one that comes to you. Uh, and then finally, you know, relating to having that balance of work and life, you have limitations of time. Um, I spent a long time trying to do everything myself. <coughs> if, if you're the kind of person who needs to make sure everything gets done exactly how you want it, you are going to need to lose that pretty quickly. <laughs> you're going to need to be more comfortable delegating to others. That's something I'm still working on to this day. <laughs> Whenever I want to work on a project, I need to have some sort of plan in place. Um, Behind the, you might find that a lot of companies, behind the scenes, you think that, oh, they're doing such amazing things. And then if you can see what's going on, as I see with a lot of my clients' companies, as I see with other web companies, there's a lot that's held up with spit and duct tape in the back end. There's just so many things that people are just making up on the spot. Um, people ask me questions. I try to be honest generally and you know, tell them whether I know or not. But I don't want to say I don't know too many times. Sometimes I make things up. Uh, with, ed with educated, with educated uh, lies, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? It's it's enough to, enough to fulfill. But there's a lot going on that you know that you can't always plan for. But in general, the things that I can really control, um, the things you know, the things that come out to the systems and technology, the things that come out to how I manage. Um, well, I'll get to some later about processes, but just things that are in my control, I try to have them pre-planned whenever I come into a project. Um, so besides planning, I try to plan what I spend my time doing. This is, uh, this is my calendar from a couple weeks ago. Um, I try to log everything that I do during the day, though granted most of it doesn't go on this calendar because that'd just be a nightmare. So usually I just do things like phone calls when I have meetings, um, when I have events coming up, what things I have due for a specific day. I try to get it so I can look each morning to see what I'm working on. Um, so that's, that's part of my plan for being able to see what I'm working on that day. One of the most amazing things for me, uh, being someone who's not normally a planner and not very, uh, I'm very forgetful in general, uh, is the introduction of all of these awesome tools 
uh, integrated calendar tools, uh, things, like, um, things like Google Now, things that help me remember uh, and figure out what I'm working on. Um, I got this watch a couple months ago because the most amazing thing ever is that I can just talk at it. You know, I can be like, okay, Google, remind me to something later. And it'll record it for me. And then it'll buzz me later when I forget. To, oh, yeah, that's right. I have whatever thing I have to do today, which happens to me very often. Turn that off still. <laughs> um, and it pops up all here. So I pretty much get a notice every morning of what are all the meetings I have for today, what are all the calls I have for the day. Uh, I take things as they come day by day, but I can add things on pretty quickly. Uh, that's been tremendous as part of my plan, uh, just being able to see everything that I have to do and block out time accordingly. Um, does anyone use Trello? I know there's a, uh, there's a bunch of tools out there. I love Trello. I use it for uh, almost everything, even things that have nothing to do with clients or web design. I use it to plan out trips that I'm going on, things like that. Uh, Trello is a uh, project management tool, uh, similar to um, Basecamp, Podio, Asana, Do. Um, there's a lot of them out there. This one's fa uh, focused on the getting things done mentality, which, uh, which I love, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, you sort things into lists. I'm going to show um, a screenshot of another one in a bit, but it, it uh, helps you sort things into lists to see where you are on project and where things need to go. Uh, plus, it's, it's helpful to keep that plan in sync with other people on your team so I can pass things along to different parts of the process. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have these on, online later uh, with the videos and everything, so you don't need to write them all down now. But uh, there's a lot of tools that we use internally and a lot of tools that I use with clients to help keep these plans in place. Uh, I use something to track my time. Uh, right now, it's mainly harvest and rescue time. Um, although I try to add another, Toggle works very well and it's a free one uh, that exists. Uh, basically, these things let me see what I'm spending my time doing during the day, uh, track time for specific client projects. Um, for me, a really important thing is uh, introspection, re retrospectives, being able to see what I did recently and go, okay, maybe I spent a little bit too much time this past week on Twitter. Maybe I should focus a little bit more on turning that tab off and you know looking at whatever project I'm working on. Um, I'm trying to do the whole like the, the whole quantified life, quantified self thing, and it's really it's really helpful to see uh, to correlate days that I spend way too much time on things that don't involve work, and then see what other things I did that day. It lets me uh, figure out where my weak spots are in terms of focus and concentration. Um, um, here, I have a hard time concentrating, like I do. You know, are you super ADD? Are you not even, are all the people who like, I can tell you're listening even though you're looking down at your phones right now while you're raising your hands. Uh, right, so that's me. Um, I, will, I will literally like be like, I will be in the middle of, say, writing a function for a client site and then just switch over to something else entirely and work on like a completely different client just because at that exact moment, my brain says, hey, you should go do this instead. Um, that's probably not the most efficient way to work. So uh, I, I try to force myself into blocking off time, saying, you know, I'm going to focus on doing this. And then, again, reviewing later, see what I've done. <laughs> um, I'm not great with money. Uh, I don't know if any of you out here are amazing money uh, whizzes. I'm, I'm not super great with it. I need things to tell me what to do. I have literally had clients who've sent me checks. And I'm like, what's this for? And they're like, well, because you did this thing. I'm like, oh, OK, sure. I mean, it's, it's nice. It's like finding a 20 in your pocket because you forgot to wear those jeans for a while. But um, it, it's kind of bad when you're running a business. Uh, so, I, so I started getting better at it. Uh, I use FreshBooks myself, and I use Harvest as well. Um, and then another popular one is QuickBooks if you use it for all of your other accounting. Uh, I, can, I, can quickly send out, um, I can quickly send out invoices to clients. Uh, track which ones have been paid. Uh, my, my favorite thing for FreshBooks in particular is that you can see when clients have looked at things. And I get so often people are like, oh, I never got that email. And I can go look and be like, you're such a liar. You logged in and looked at this like <laughs> right after I, you know, I never call them out on it, but I keep it in the back of my mind when I'm, you know, when I'm, when I'm working with clients. Um, yeah. Do you invoice from FreshBooks? I invoice from FreshBooks. And then do you harvest Internally, yeah, with myself and with people I work with so I can get an idea of how many hours they're working on a project. Um, oh, as somebody who doesn't, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. That's, that is also good because, again, I don't have to think about it. Um, as somebody who knows that I don't manage my time very well and somebody will come to me and go, like, well, how long does this take? And you know, 
don't know, like three hours. Uh, and then, you know, it turned out later, never mind, it took me 45 minutes or it took me five hours. Uh, I, I use uh, Harvest with my uh, contractors to see how long they're spending on something because I know the numbers they give me for how long something's going to take aren't necessarily true either. Not because we're lying, but because sometimes it's just hard to really estimate how long things will take. Um, I see that problem as I, I, I think about the uh, coastline problem. Uh, if anyone's familiar, it's when you're looking at the, a coastline, like I live in Florida, so I'm looking at the Florida coast, and I can look at it on a map, and I can see, okay, the coastline is you know, 1,000 miles or something. Uh, then I zoom in a little bit closer on it. I, I double the zoom on it, and I see, never mind, I'm re-measuring that coastline. It's actually like 1,500 miles because I get a little bit more detail. The further in you zoom, the more detail you get, and the more, uh, you know, the longer that coastline is. It's the same thing for these projects. I'll look at something and go, Oh, that contact page should take me, you know, two hours to finish putting together. Uh, but then I didn't realize, oh, wait, I have to come up with the content for this. Or, oh, they have some interesting form integration that they want to do. Or something else that I didn't know from first glance uh, that changes the time. Do you require your contractors to log in Harvest and track their work on yeah. their end? Or yes. Okay. No, no, no. They, they track it because it's so easy just to, uh, oh, um, Trello uh, has a nice Harvest integration in it where I can have a card that says, you know, contact form. Uh, and on the card, I'll, again, I'll show a screenshot of this in a bit, but on the card, uh, it has a little button that you can start tracking your time right in Harvest. So while they're working on that task, they can actually click track time right there. Uh, or you can get it for your browser, like a little uh, menu bar thingy icon. <laughs> um, and again, something to manage your proje uh, projects. I don't care what you use. Everyone has one that they will live and die by that they say is like the best one ever. I don't care. I like Trello. I've used Basecamp, Podio, Asana, Do. I've used half a dozen of them. Trello, uh, Trello one is uh, is is really easy. It's really easy for new people to get started with. Um, it does have some drawbacks that some of the other ones some of the other ones have other tools that it doesn't have. Um, I make up for the fact that it's really easy for new people to get on with, and it is 99% of all the stuff you can do is free. Um, yeah, I have the paid plan because they use they make such a good tool that I use a lot. But admittedly, the paid plan doesn't even it lets you like change the color of cards and stuff, things that I don't really need. Um, you had a question? Have you found sure. any of those that help you really manage your resources, like completing a bill or anything? I just wrote the Okay. Um, so I I haven't done that. Admittedly, I, I just follow up with people, uh, you know, via uh, via Slack, via Hangouts, something else. Just say, hey, do you have some time for this this week? And I try to block out uh, the full week in advance so I can see what people are working on, but not so far out in advance that they say they're free and then something else happens. Um, the best the best thing for that is that you can actually tag people in cards on these and say that this is your project and this is the time <coughs> you're assigned to it. Um, and then they can follow back up and say whether or not that's feasible. Uh, plus, I can look at it in a calendar view and see if, like, I'm really loading a lot of stuff onto one person. I kind of know that that's not going to be feasible. Have you had a question? I was just going to um, ask you if Trello is then my part of your Yes. Yeah. I've. I've. Yeah. Um, I mean, Basecamp is very good, but it's a little pricey, uh, and I found other ways to do most of those features that actually work better for me. You know, you can, you can do a lot more customization, personalization in other tools than you can in Basecamp. Uh, so I'd much rather people see things coming with our logo and everything. Um, I briefly mentioned have a process for the things that you're doing. I, I have processes for when a client reaches out to us, a Trello board, actually, that, uh, that all of my leads for clients go into. That's another nice thing about Trello. It can take integrations from other services. So I'm not here just to sell that tool, but it's awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so, I've, so every time someone fills out my, uh, my contact form, thank you, Gravity Forms Integrations, um, we'll go straight to a Trello board, a Trello card, excuse me, and I can follow up from there, move them into different lists based on how far I followed up. So if it goes into your Trello, does it also go into your Hour Yes. So it's yeah, yeah, I can do, um, I mean, depending on whatever integrations I can find. I use Zapier and Ift a lot, their services to uh, integrate different services together. Uh, I can pretty much just chain a lot of things together, which has worked amazingly well for my process, uh, for pretty much everything I do, uh, because it saves a lot of time that I'd spend on doing things. Um, for instance, this is a board. This one's almost, well, this one actually is a done project, so I feel OK putting this up here. So I have, um, so we would have a list of things. They're all a little bit different, but they're pretty similar. In this case, I have just one things we haven't started on yet. And um, 
small enough company that we don't do any sort of agile or scrum or anything like that. It's very much a waterfall method, meaning that we move from one stage to the next while we're working. So uh, most of our client website builds are we're going to move into design. Uh, when something is designed, we're going to move it to development. When it's done in development, we have completed. If I'm working with uh, contractors, if I'm working with anyone else besides you know, myself and my uh, business partner, we also have a review board uh, list. Excuse me. Uh, these here are lists. The whole thing's a board. Um, we have a review list, so they move it there, and then I can just come in at the end of the day and click on what they've done, see it before I move to completed, or make more messages. Uh, so a few things about Trello. Um, one, you can make, uh, you can have things attached to cards, images. If you have files from clients, uh, pretty much any kind of file you can attach. Uh, you can make checklists, which you may see that there are some of these uh, green means everything on the checklist has been completed. Uh, I can assign due dates to things. I can assign specific people to cards. Um, you can leave comments on them. You can also link them to other pages, cards, whatever. Basically, you can have one place that can be a hub for all of the activity uh, that you do. And then again, with all the integrations it has into other tools, when certain things happen, I can make them happen other places as well. Um, and you can have a running log of all the things that have been done on this project or on any other project you do. So that's part of my process for the work that I'm doing. Uh, the process is I can see, uh, or excuse me, the process is for you know what happens when I'm building a custom plugin for a client, what happens when I'm building a custom theme, what happens when I'm reaching out to a, a new client, uh, what happens when I'm following up for payment. I have like a specific list of things to do, uh, which is evolving over time. This helps me with my work, make sure I've hit all the check marks. What happens when I'm putting a client site live? Now I know all the things I need to do. This also helps when I'm working with someone else. So when I have to pass on to someone else and say, you're going to put this client site live today, they have a full checklist to make sure that they have to get all these steps done before they can say that they're complete. Um, it's a really important thing to do just because, especially, especially again, getting to that delegation, getting to that having control. I get to have my cake and eat it too. I get to have full control. You know, make sure everything is perfect um, while still having someone else do that work for me. So I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to worry about coming back and having someone go, "Oh, well, what happened? To all the redirects to our old site uh, or from our old site," um, and have to scramble to figure out did this person do that or not? Uh, theoretically, I should be able to look at the checklist and confirm that they did. Is Trello integrated with Slack? I'm getting a yes. I have not tried yet, but. Oh, right, yes, actually, yes, excuse me, yes. We, uh, yeah, so when cards move around, you can integrate it with Slack to give notifications. Uh, we don't use Slack for clients yet. Um, I'm on like eight Slack channels already. I don't need any more of them. What's Slack? Oh, um, Slack is a chat service. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of like AIM on steroids, AIM, Yahoo Messenger, all those older ones. Uh, the idea is that you can um, have uh, a Slack group uh, which has individual channels in it. So for instance, WordPress has one. If any of you are not on it, go to chat.wordpress.org and you can join the WordPress uh, Slack channels. Um, and there's a channel for all the different teams that exist in WordPress. Uh, you can privately chat with people. You can send files back and forth. You can uh, share fun gifts because that's an important part of our day. Um, <laughs> you can keep up to date on what people are doing. And you get notifications when someone wants to talk to you specifically, uh, which is really helpful when you're part of Eight plus Slack channels. <laughs> did you, did you, when you start a new project, you know, you have help style and ideas. Do you have that in Trello and you copy it, or how do you? So I do have a client. I do have a client starter Trello board. Yes. So one thing that you can do with Trello, you can copy uh, boards, uh, the whole blue thing here. You can copy lists from one board to another, uh, and you can also copy individual cards. So if you have one, a template that you're starting with, then you can copy that to new clients. Uh, which is what we do because most of the clients will fit onto the same type of board. Uh, and then plus I can take that template and every time I have a new you know, step to add, I can just add it there and have it extend across new ones. Did you say it has a calendar view as well? It does have a calendar view. When you, um, it's called a uh, power up. Um, there's a little, when you're looking at a board, there's a little button here that says menu. You pop it, menu pops down, and it'll say like get power up. So you actually have to turn on the calendar for individual boards. It's kind of a pain that uh, it's not turned on by default, but um, it's useful when you have that you can see all of them. And then going back to the uh, calendar app that I was using before, it's called Sunrise. It's just a free calendar app. Uh, you can also have Trello cards show up there. Uh, so when if I have specific due dates, I can see them on my. Um, Is it tied to Google Excuse me. Is it tied to Google Calendar? 
Uh, it can, um, but I, not, not by default, no. You have to, you have to use some sort of uh, ex extra integration. Uh, so I'm just going to hop back real quick. Uh, this one right here, this is a, a free app called Sunrise. Um, it's in the browser. It's in both Windows and Mac. I think Microsoft actually just bought them like last week or the week before. Um, but it was originally meant for a Google Calendar thing. So you can integrate Google Calendar, a um, couple different types of other calendars. Uh, most of the major project management boards could. Um, meetups, Facebook for you know birthdays and stuff and events. Um, whenever I'm invited to something, I'll get a little notification. Um, so you, it's, it's, it's basically like a, a calendar app for all of your other calendars uh, to link together. Uh, so, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, quick question. Yep. So I'm not sure if you're billing your clients hourly or flat rate, but do you charge them for the time that they spend on your calendar? I do cap the amount of hours people spend uh, to a point. I try to give a guideline of how much time they should spend, but again, since I don't know how long a project is going to take, one, I pad in some extra time with clients. Uh, you know, I, I think. If I say this is going to be 10 hours, it's probably going to be a little bit more, so I'm going to bill it at 15 usually. Um, depending on the project, depends on how I bill. Um, most projects are by the project. Um, sometimes I do hourly, especially if it's smaller maintenance work. And then there are a few clients, if it's a larger client, um, usually do weekly billing. So it's kind of like how many hours do we spend on your project this week? Because usually at the size of those clients, it's um, open-ended to when the project will end. Um, it's similar uh, to uh, stay on the topic of, of payments. It's another thing too that I have pay clients pay before they do the work, before I do the work. Excuse me. Uh, so I usually break projects, especially if it's a project base, um, into uh, milestones and then phases. It's very. I've gotten a lot better at planning <laughs> over the years. <laughs> Having to force myself into into rigid structures has been, has been very helpful. But um, whenever there's like a certain milestone, so like this milestone is the wireframe milestone. Uh, they pay for that milestone before we build those uh, wireframes and then move on to the next. That saves a lot of time having to chase clients for money. Uh, in terms of flat rates, um, kind of something I've been lost on. Uh, but uh, would you say it'd be better if you're doing this full with a paid rate? Because like, would that be better than doing a, a flat rate but billing hourly? Because it's something that is very, very Right. Most most client projects I do on a flat. Most um, the majority of the work that we do is custom theme and plugin development. Yeah. Uh, so it's just building themes and plugins for specific clients, um, and we do that on by the project. Okay. Uh, usually, you know, estimate how long that project will take and then build to that. Um, in addition to the whole having having a process, uh, one of my processes I use um, I use Genesis a lot for uh, for a lot of clients. Um, if it's something much uh, more custom, I use underscores. But for both of them, I have my own child theme that I've created that um, has a lot of things already built into it. Uh, so I can just go in and do like a search and replace for you know the client name, change it. I actually have a little form that I use to do this now. Um, but I go in when I'm starting a new project, make a copy of it in the new WordPress install. And um, I have little bits of code that I can just comment on and off uh, and go, OK, in this one, I do have a need for um, for these uh, certain functions, I'm going to comment them on. Or I, knowing that Genesis has specific hooks in place, I have a whole section that's just like navigation, footer, widgets. And I can just go in and go, yes, they are going to need a footer widget. They're going to need three of them. Or yes, they're going to need the no sub navigation. So I'll comment that out. Um, and that, that allows me to just very quickly, in a few minutes, go through and get the bare bones of this website done so that I can spend time on styling it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my main uh, function style of this theme is um, it's all one thing that happens in the Genesis setup hook, in this case specifically, um, broken down into uh, sections of the page. So, like there's a section for header, there's a section for the head tag, for footer, et cetera, uh, for all the widgets. And then I have, um, and then I have library functions for um, custom post type functions, uh, for uh, user control functions, for different widgets I'm doing. Whatever things that go in, they all have their own files. Have you organized your files? Or? Um, basically, the functions file at the top links to other specific files if they're needed in the project. Yeah, where do you keep your code templates? Where, where, where? Yeah. 
Oh, um, in a separate folder, um, a lib folder. The ones that you use for like end client. Yeah. You have like a snippets folder. folder. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah, I have I have uh, one folder that with uh, with a lot of work like that. Uh, I haven't gotten into putting it all up online. I know that you know everyone uses GitHub or something to put it up. I haven't done that. Uh, maybe one day. <laughs> Um, but I also have, uh, I use uh, Vagrant for, um, for starting new sites when I'm working on them locally. And I have the folders there, so I can just start a new website, uh, push it up. Um, if I'm not, mis oh no, sorry, different WordCamp. I was going to say, I also use um, Brad Parv's VV. If anyone here does development, that's a pretty cool thing to make it a lot easier for me to um, start new websites. <laughs> uh, it's, um, there's a tool called Vagrant. Um, and uh, there's a company called Tenup that did this tool called Varying Vagrant Vagrants VVV, um, which admittedly is similar to the uh, it's similar to the server structure I'd use for client sites. Um, so I use their tool because it's a lot of work that's gone into it. Basically, it's a way for me to start new sites on my own computer, um, so I can start developing on my own computer and put them live. Um, and then there's another tool that someone built to top that called VV. Uh, which makes uh, that process even easier. Um, so I can go into uh, the command line and type out, you know, one or two line commands uh, to start building, start building sites for me. And then having my own code in there too means that, you know, I can go in and in a couple minutes be like 50% done with the actual work of the site. <laughs> Brad Parbs. Um, for a second I thought he was here and then I was thinking the wrong word camp. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can find it on his on his GitHub page um, and how to use it. Uh, it works rather well. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I use Bitbucket for my client sites. Uh, the reason I use Bitbucket over Git is Bitbucket gives you free private repos, and I figure if it's client work, you may as well have it not public facing. Um, like I said, I haven't really yet gotten to using GitHub to put up my own stuff to share, but I should probably get around to doing that. <laughs> Again, I have a problem with focus. I've thought about like 500 different things while I'm standing here talking. So uh, it's, it's amazing that I can get things done, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, staying focused is kind of hard for me. I don't know if it is for any of all, but I found ways to uh, stay focused by removing distractions from the room. Um, I already live a kind of minimal lifestyle, so my house is kind of boring, admittedly, which just works for me to not, you know, not spend too much time doing other random things. Uh, so I have a specific, you know, I have, a, I have a workspace in my house. I also work out of a co-working space, which is even more sparse because I just bring my laptop and I sit down at an empty table. Um, but but I, ha I have those spaces that are specific, like this is where I'm going to be when I'm working. I've separated uh, space that I use for home activities from, uh, from the office space. I don't have a dedicated office anymore. Um, I used to, and then I moved into a smaller place, but uh, now what I do is I have, I have an area in, uh, in the dining room, which admittedly we never use the dining room anyway, um, and so I don't go like sit on the couch in the living room or something. I sit in one space, and when I'm there, I know I'm on the computer doing work, doing something. Um, one thing that I've had a harder problem with is differentiating between the on and off time. Uh, when you can work wherever you want, whenever you want, you're working everywhere all the time. Because uh, you think, oh, well, I can get that done. I have a few more hours tonight. Or, oh, you know, I'm going to put that off until later because if I don't do it now, I can just catch up on it before bed or whatever. Um, that, that's going to be the death of me But uh, <laughs> to figure out a way to, uh, to work on the better. I try to set specific times. Uh, most important for me is with clients. I definitely have a work day um, with my clients. I'm an early riser, so I have my work day. I say, like, you know, they can contact me and I'll respond to them between 8 and 5 on weekdays. Um, if it's not, then you know, just imagine that I'm in an office and that the phone is not even near me anymore. If I see it ringing, I'll get to them tomorrow. Uh, if I get an email, I'll respond if I feel like it. Um, I tried using auto, not auto responders, timed responders for a while. Like um, there's a tool called Boomerang for Gmail and there's a few others. Uh, I found, um, or there's one called Follow Up as well. I found that they're only helpful if you really just want to disguise the fact that you're on at midnight. Uh, doing stuff and you want to make sure it goes out at 8 a.m. I usually forget to put them on, so stop doing that. Um, but basically, I try to, I, I make a specific time that I say, this is when I'm available. Uh, if I'm doing something outside this time, that's because I want to be doing that. So I have a hard time dealing with constant calls during the day from clients, and a lot of them aren't available at a certain time that I might be available. So how do you manage? Uh, 
Um, I, don't, I don't like the phone very much. I'm not a phone person. I love talking to clients, don't get me wrong, but I'm not a phone person very much. Uh, I schedule all calls. I mean, for, for client calls, if, if we don't have a scheduled call, then I'm just going to assume that, you know, that I'm in the middle of doing something else at that time. Um, a lot of people might be, you know, I'm sure probably some of you in this room are probably listening to me going, what the heck are you? The client is always, you know, number one, whatever. I like my clients. And I absolutely agree. They're the ones paying me. I should be giving them, you know, the proper time. But there is a proper time for that. And I can go, well, I have some time available on Thursday. Here's a few times I'm available. Uh, one of my friends actually has a calendar in his signature of his email that's like, hey, do you want some of my time? Book it here. And he click on it. It's called You Can Book Me. And uh, they can click on it, see times that you're available, and do that. Uh, I chose not to go that route because uh, I don't want to make it an open invite to just go, oh, well, David's free for an hour. Click. <laughs> now he's not. <laughs> um, that's that's not uh, that 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 not something I want to do. But when it comes to uh, when it comes to clients, let's say they're on um, a different time zone. Uh, so most of my clients are East Coast. I'm lucky there. But uh, I do have some uh, clients who are in different time zones, or even better, teams that are in different time zones. So we're talking to one person who's out in Denver, and someone else who's in LA, and then someone else who's in Miami. Um, we also be on the call at the same time. Um, one, I have to make sure I'm very specific, saying no matter who the client is, our call is from 3 to 3.30 EST. I make sure, you know, I say the time zone as well, just in case they think I'm talking I, um, a different time zone. Because um, I had one client who was like, oh, well, no, you said it was 3, and I'm in California, and I forgot. So he's like, so make sure you change it to 3. But that's a three-hour difference for me. I had other stuff going on at that time. Uh, so I had to kill that pretty quickly. <laughs> um, right, so I, I, I pre-schedule those calls. Um, there's not many exceptions I make to that. It, usually it's easier, too, because I can you know, make sure that it's a time that works for them, that I can say, hey, we have our half-hour chat to review what we've done this week and go over what we're going to do next week. Uh, that's another thing, too. I try to schedule everything in the 30-minute blocks because a call can go on for an hour. If you give someone an hour, uh, the call will take 30 minutes if you give them 30 minutes. <laughs> Uh, underscores. underscores? Um, it can be found at underscores.me. Uh, it's mainly uh, mainly people who work uh, on WordPress core or uh, at Automatic, the WordPress.com parrot company. Um, there are a lot of people who contribute it to that, and they use it for, I think, all the Automatic themes now. So um, I can trust that code base. There's no style sheets associated with it, so you have to do all of the styling of the website yourself, but it's a good base of HTML and PHP. Um, there's really no need to redo it every time you're doing a new site. If you want to write your own theme, I, I wrote my own theme framework for a couple years ago that I used for a lot of client sites, and then you know, I didn't like maintaining it, moved over to two other existing ones. Um, you can make your own theme if you want, just you know, why spend the time doing something different on every website? There's a reason that something like, say, Genesis is popular. Go look at their website at all the different themes, and just think about the fact that it's pretty much just a functions and a style sheet that is the only thing that makes them different from one another. Um, you know, WordPress is pretty flexible. And, I'm sorry, also, in the previous slide, what was the development environment that you were using? Oh, uh, this, the uh, screen? Um, it's called Sublime Text. Okay. Um, this one has a free trial, uh, but it is a paid one. Um, I like it because it has something called packages. Uh, basically, they're bits of code that other people wrote that you can include on your site. Uh, or include, excuse me, ex include in your project. Uh, so I have things that will... Um, that will automatically minify and concatenate files for me, uh, things that will upload files on save, um, connect securely to servers for me. Uh, I use um, a CSS linting tool. It's something to clean up the code. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that you can get for it. And you can make it look pretty much however you want. That's just the theme that I chose for it. Yeah. When you start a new project, what makes you choose between Genesis or Underscores? So it's usually more budget, actually. Okay. Um, and there's, a, there's, there's two reasons that it's budget. One, lower budget means I'm going to have less time to spend on it. So I'm going to start with one that I have more. The Genesis child theme that I have, I use for more projects than the underscores one, just because I've done so many things to it you know, over, over I think about two years. I've been using this specific child theme that every time I have a new thing that I want to do, I just put it into the, my base one, uh, and then I can go from there. Um, and then two, usually if it's a bigger budget project, that also means that there's more complexity to it, in which case, you know, not that I don't 
fully trust all the Genesis code, but I'd much rather have it just be streamlined to just the things that I need. Um, so in a roundabout way, it's budget that you, uh, which one I use. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I like, oh, yeah. Uh, in terms of framework, what's your favorite? I'm sorry, in terms of what? Framework. I'm, I'm sorry. Frameworking. <coughs> Frameworking. Like Bootstrap Foundation. Which one is your? Oh, okay. Um, I I don't really have a preference there. Um, I don't. I don't like Bootstrap being pushed into everything. Um, I think that it has a lot of great use cases, but I actually don't think WordPress in general is the best use case for Bootstrap, and. I am much more a fan of, um, rather than using a CSS framework, of uh, building things specific to the site. Um, I try to build things that are device agnostic, uh, which is a lot harder to do with Bootstrap. Plus, it's harder for our design team to have to you know, think about. Like, it, it can be a good constraint, but in a lot of times, I still have to rewrite something anyway, you know, something that actually spans three and a half columns instead of three or whatever. Um, and then I focus on. Um, the most, you know, the main thing that people want to use, or in my mind, the main thing that people want to use a uh, framework for, uh, for their style is for things like responsiveness. And I try to make that focused on the content of the site rather than, rather than some notion that I have of how it should collapse. Um, but I mean, you know, I don't have any specific breakpoints that apply to specific types of tablets or phones or whatever. I go with what looks best for the content, or at least I try to as much as possible. Also, are you a staff user? I'm not. Uh, I just never got into that stuff. I don't. I'm sure it'd probably save more time too. Um, maybe one of these days. I, I, I slowly ramp up to new to new things. Like one thing that I know a lot of uh, people use. I know um, David Parsons over there. Uh, yeah, can you look up for me? Uh, he uses Grunt a lot for his projects, and he do a lot of cool stuff. He has a really good talk um, on WordPress.tv about automating your automation. Um, with a lot with Grunt. I just never, I haven't gotten into it yet. That's another tool that I'm sure can save me time, but I have to spend all the time ramping up learning it before I can get there. Uh, so it's a trade-off to make one day. Um, so there's, there's a few, if anyone has any cool tools afterwards, please share them with me. Uh, we have a session in our meetups called Cool Tools where we get people to show things that they found online to help them do their jobs better. And uh, there's always something I've never heard of there. Um, Finally, as I mentioned before, you know, I, have to, I, I spend, I have the trade-off of doing all of the work and uh, maybe not necessarily always even making as much as I could just uh, doing an hourly project for somebody. Uh, but my trade-off is that I get the free time myself. I have my own ability to choose when I'm working on things, what I'm working on, when I get to say no to the client if I want to, when I get to make new suggestions that they might not have thought of. So my motivation here is definitely independence. I feel like I'm a very independent person. I like the fact that I can just do whatever the heck I want whenever I want to within reason. Um, that's, that's my motivation for what I'm doing. At the very least, I hope that everyone has some sort of intrinsic motivator for starting your own companies. Because, I mean, most of you here say you own your companies. I'm sure you all can attest it's a lot of hard work, right? Uh, it might not always be the best payoff. There are certain projects that would be a lot easier if I just had some other company running it and I just did, like, contracting for it. Uh, but I like that ability to choose what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. Um, I say no a lot. <laughs> I say, or rather, I say no to clients a lot. Um, I try to do so in their best interest, uh, but also when it's just something I don't want to work on, admittedly. I think you, you're obviously comfortable saying no to clients now, but when you first started out, were you comfortable saying no? I mean, because you, you see that right. you have the... You know, you don't know how much money you're going to make from one week or one month to the next. Right. One of the right. problems I had when I started out was always saying yes yeah, to small projects. And those are the ones that became the biggest pain in the ass because it's yeah. the clients that don't want to pay you money that it's growing. That, grow. that, that is correct. Um, so when I was first starting out, I probably said yes more than I should have. Um, and it's not, that I'm, it's not that I say no to everybody all the time. Um, usually when a client comes to me, the lead is... Uh, the lead is good enough that I, um, when they come to me usually, that if I contact them back and then they contact me back, that usually means I'm getting the project, whatever it is, if I want it. Um, just gotten to that point of like streamlining that process a bit. Um, I had the ability to say no, because I was working another job, and I uh, also had limited time. So I had to say no out of necessity. 
Uh, if, if you have a lot of, you know, if you have a lot of free time and you're looking for clients, you might say yes to things you wouldn't normally say yes to, which isn't necessarily bad. There are projects that I thought would be great that became headaches, and then there are projects that I thought would be terrible that turns out they were pretty reasonable people. And not that clients aren't <laughs> usually reasonable, but that they were, you know, that I end up learning something new. Um, final real big thought that I have is uh, is having some perspective on what you're working on. Again, there's a lot that you could be spending your time doing. And even within, even within WordPress, you could decide, well, I want to be, you know, build a plugin and I'm going to sell that plugin uh, with a SaaS model. Or I'm going to sell that plugin uh, just individually to, you know, individual buyers. Or I'm going to make plugins for specific clients. I'm going to make themes and I'm going to sell those themes custom. Um, that's what we mainly do. Versus I'm going to make those themes and sell them mass market. Or I just want to do support or whatever, many things you have. Uh, you have to have uh, perspective on what part of the market is going to be the place that you find yourself best fitting. I enjoy doing, um, I, 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 it's easy for me to keep current client sites up to date, uh, fix any problems they have, people who I've already worked with, uh, but I don't really like doing general support. You know, I don't like, I, I'm not a fan of clients coming to me for like a one or two hour project. I try to focus on the project base because that's where, that's where I found I fit best or where I can give the proper amount of focus. So, leading into what we just talked about, uh, jumped the gun a little bit. The, I hate the phrase, the customer is always right. Um, that's wrong. Sorry, it's, it's, it's wrong. There's a reason. I, I, um, I try to impress this upon people I work with. Uh, you're not hiring me because I know how to build something. You're not hiring me uh, because I can take this idea that you drew down and build it. You're hiring me for my experience and expertise as well. You're hiring for me for all the countless hours that I spend traveling to WordCamps and doing meetups and reading blogs and doing all those things. Uh, the ability to uh, make suggestions and tell you when something's going to work or not. Uh, plenty of clients who are like, well, I want to have a video that auto plays when someone comes to my website. <laughs> <laughs> you're all laughing, so I can assume that you all know that, that that's not, that doesn't convert very well almost all the time. Uh, some clients will still want that and you know, I have to say, well, here, I have data to back up. No, this doesn't work. Or, you know, I'm not a fan of sliders. No, I don't think in most cases the slider is going to uh, help convert. I think you should choose one of these things as your key message uh, to use. Um, again, as I mentioned before, I have specific working hours that I stick to. If I tell someone I'll be available at a certain time, I try to be available at that time. But at the same time, I also have times that I'm not available for my clients to contact, so I have time to regroup, focus, Play video what, games, do it heck on. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, yeah. what did you do when you were when you had that day job and you were setting those hours? How did you do it? How did you handle that before going all on your own and you did have that day job? How did you handle it? Clients were calling in the middle of the day or whatever. So um, I usually schedule those either for uh, for the early evening uh, or during my lunch time. Um, it was, it was an open secret that I was uh, doing my own clients at my job, so it wasn't really a, uh, you know, there wasn't any, like, I have to hide this or anything. Uh, the decision to uh, leave the day job, uh, by the way, came at a point when, um, when the amount that I was making at home was the same amount that I was making there, and I had six months of, uh, of savings in the bank for, like, all of my needs, and I thought, okay, this is the time that, you know, I know not everyone's as lucky enough to do this. Some people are thrust into the freelance life. Uh, some people um, don't. You know, do that, but I, I was pretty lucky there, I will say. Was the winter a big thing for you as far as stuff at all? Um, again, I was, I was lucky in a variety of ways. Uh, one was um, my, both of my parents were in the uh, Army, so uh, throughout college I had free um, health care. Thank you, uh, US military. Um, and then uh, my partner has a job uh, where he, he uh, has insurance, thankfully, they cover as well. Uh, so for there were a few years there in a gap that I was uninsured. Um, obviously had something happened, had I gotten to an accident or something, the story could have been a lot different. Um, there, there is a certain point that comes down to luck. Uh, finding clients is luck. Getting someone to do something, there, there is a certain amount of luck in there. Um, again, I was not hiding this from my boss. As I mentioned at the start of this, I had this honest, uh, I had honesty with them right up front. Uh, when I went out on my own, uh, within the first month, two of his clients contacted me personally, and they were like,
like, hey, I don't like something or whatever, will you do my work for me? Um, and I immediately reached out to him and was like, by the way, you have some clients who are trying to tell me shit. So, you know, for whatever reason. I don't think those clients are around anymore, but uh, I, I, I had, I, I, I wasn't gonna be that guy who, you know, felt like I needed to say yes to get these clients. Uh, so I, I made sure I let him do that. And I'm starting to try not to yeah, run down the time. Um, try to keep my clients happy, but within reason, if they ask for something that I think is a little too outrageous, I'll push back on it, unless they really ask, because, you know, a nice big check. <laughs> um, and most important for me is uh, I try to keep those clients happy, because they will go out to other people without me having to do anything. I haven't even, it's one of my lists to start asking them for referrals, but for right now, almost all the work I get is through uh, partnerships with other companies uh, and referrals from older clients. Uh, if you don't keep your clients happy, they're not going to refer you <laughs> to other people. Um, and I apologize for rushing this last bit. I just went a little bit longer than I meant to. Um, again, I spent too many years doing all this myself. I finally have a support team behind me, people who I can trust, who do awesome design work, awesome development, can ha handle projects for me, can do all these other things when I'm not available. Uh, but also I have people who I, I just hired somebody to be like assistant kind of handle all the little tasks that, uh, that I don't make time to do during the day. It's been a tremendous amount of help and when you can do it. Um, I have a network with other companies, other uh, people who I partner with and you know, a client might come to me needing mobile development. I don't do that, but I have companies I send them to and vice versa. Uh, knowing the things I'm not good at, I'm terrible at design. I have amazing, uh, I have two people who are awesome at design who work with me. Uh, delegate the things that I'm doing to make sure that I can get as much done that I'm good at. So if it's something, I'm not a great writer either, so I delegate writing uh, to other people. Um, I have someone who does social media all day for a living. That's what she does for her clients. Um, I try to make sure I'm very conservative when I give estimates and uh, time estimates as well to clients so that uh, if I tell them it's going to be done in three weeks, I really think I'm going to get it done in like a week and a half, in which case, happy clients because it got done faster. But also, something comes up that weekend, it does take me still happy clients because I got it done at the time I promised. Um, every single project I do, I'm learning something new. Uh, I get paid to learn, it's awesome. You know, I'm sure that somebody will ask you to do something and you're like, I'm pretty sure I can do that. We'll figure it out. Um, almost all the time, almost every project, I have something that I didn't know how to do before that project that I'm able to learn on the job, which saves me uh, a lot of time that I have to learn that. I appreciate all the questions. Now I'm uh, sorry if you missed anything. Please come find me after to talk to me. Um, obviously, you're all already attending a conference. Yay! Find people who are similar to you to talk to. Maybe they have work that they want to trade. Maybe they have things that they can teach you. Um, I keep tabs on what people are doing in the WordPress space and outside of that. Um, I do uh, Treehouse. It's an online training thing. They're actually based in Orlando, so bonus, I get to see them all the time too. Uh, there's a lot of Code School, Code Academy. Code.org, all these different things that'll teach you uh, different things that you might not already know. Um, I make time to do that on a weekly basis. Uh, I try to go to events that are not WordPress related, and I try to have lots of time to read for personal fun and play video games. Um, again, uh, sorry I ran a little short. If anyone has any questions, please find me after. Thank you all for coming. Enjoy your day. Uh, I'm not going to board.